Hey everybody, this is Will Miles with Read and Reaction. We haven't done these for a while, but we're going to try to start doing it again. We've had a lot of people ask us to go ahead and provide the, the articles on Read and Reaction in YouTube form, so we're going to start doing that again as the season starts to ramp up. We're only a couple of months away, and if you don't know, hopefully you know, but if you don't know, the 2024 Florida Preview Magazine from Read and Reaction is out. It's available. You can go to readreaction.com slash mag. You can also go to Amazon, if and if you're searching in books, and you just type in Gators, the uh, the magazine will come right up. We've really had an awesome release. We've only had it out less than two weeks. Uh, we were in the top 1,000 books sold on Amazon um, in, on the entire site for a couple of days last week. We were the number one football book on the entire site. And if you like this article here where we're going to be talking about Will Griffin, there's a much more detailed analysis of DJ Lagway in that magazine that'll let you know what I think of him as a prospect, how his high school stats and film project his performance to the next level. And really um, more comprehensive than that too, because it's got an analysis of Graham Mertz that sort of leads in to the analysis of DJ Lagway. So if you like what we do here, if you want to support us, um, head over to Amazon, search Read and Reaction Magazine or search Gators under books, or you can go to readandreaction.com slash MAG. That's readandreaction.com slash MAG and order the Florida or the 2024 Read and Reaction Florida Preview Magazine. Now on to the article, Evaluating Florida 2026 Quarterback Commit Will Griffin. When Will Griffin committed to Florida on Saturday, I was excited, but not overly so. After all, this is a guy ranked 89th in the 24-7 sports composite, and he isn't coming to campus until 2026. A lot can happen between now and then. However, after taking a closer look, I'm much more excited about his commitment. That's for two main reasons. The first is that Griffin is from Tampa, Florida. These are the kids that Billy Napier and any successful Florida head coach has to get. Quarterbacks in the top 100 of the recruiting rankings are a fairly rare thing. There are only six quarterbacks who fit that profile for this most recent 2024 recruiting class, and none of them were from Florida. That meant Florida had to go outside the state to bring in DJ Lagway from Willis, Texas. Now, I'm certainly a fan of going to Texas for Lagway, but constantly going outside of your own state to bring in talent is a waste of resources when you're the flagship school in the state as recruiting rich as Florida. Griffin may be a sign that the tide is starting to turn in-state at Florida as the NIL organization finally finds its footing. If that's true, then we're about to see a major uptick in recruiting overall. And if that's true, it's going to coincide with Florida keeping players like Griffin at home. But the second reason I'm more excited about this commitment than at first glance is that I looked at Griffin's high school statistics. And the first thing you'll notice in the chart that I have here on the webpage is that I've included stats from the eighth grade. So in eighth grade, 144 of 266, so 54.1% completion, 2,449 yards, 9.2 yards per attempt, 30 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. The reason I've included eighth grade is because Griffin was playing varsity football at Northside Christian. And for context, Trinity Christian won that division in the 2021-2022 season when Griffin was playing and had a junior running back named Trayon Webb. So this isn't nothing. His freshman year, he took over as a starter in week five at Tampa Jesuit and started all of last season. So his freshman year, one of 106 of 187, so 56.7% completion percentage, 1,653 yards, 8.8 yards per attempt, 18 touchdowns, nine interceptions. His sophomore season, 244 of 361, so 67.6% completion percentage, 3,404 yards, 9.4 yards per attempt, 34 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. You can see a jump in both the attempts and completion percentage from his freshman to his sophomore season, and that's where I get excited. A true sophomore completing nearly 68% of his passes indicates that this is a guy who is starting to read defenses. Now, of course, the one caveat to that is the 9.4 yards per attempt. That is a little bit low for an elite prospect, and I suspect part of why he's top 100 rather than top 30. You don't have to go too far to find a player with a similar high school profile and recruiting ranking. Jarek Guarantano, Drew, Ro Drew Locke, and Ricky Town are decent comps who struggled to put everything together at the college level. Of course, C.J. Stroud and Tua Tagovailoa also come pretty close to fitting Griffin's profile as well. Griffin has thrown a lot of interceptions, 10 as a sophomore, 9 as a freshman, and 12 in 8th grade. 
But when you look at the film, you see why that is. There's a play that I show on the website where Griffin shows great pocket awareness when he gets pressured by stepping up in the pocket to escape pressure rather than trying to escape directly to the outside. By stepping up, that actually allows him to get outside of the pocket and deliver the throw. This is the kind of thing that prevents sacks and allows big plays to develop. And you see that when you look at Griffin's yards per attempt rushing. He doesn't rush a ton, but it's a positive net and a positive average. And what that says is he doesn't take a ton of stats, a ton of sacks. Griffin does completely ignore his check down, who's wide open, as he looks for a place to throw the ball on the play. But instead, he throws a dart to a streaking wide receiver down the sideline. That receiver has very little separation from the corner covering him, and there's a safety coming over the sideline to help. That means Griffin's throw has to be perfect to execute the play. It is. <laughs> this kind of gunslinger mentality is going to lead to some interceptions, but it's also going to lead to, to lead to a lot of big plays. It's also important to remember, though, that when it comes to the statistics or film analysis, I'm comparing Griffin's sophomore season to these other players' senior seasons. That means this is still a player with significant room to grow for the next two seasons. And that's the point of this write-up and my enthusiasm. Because Griffin still has room to develop, Florida just got a commitment from a player from the state of Florida at the most important position on the field, who has the potential to develop into an even more elite-level prospect. That's how you build a winning program. So that's my take on Will Griffin. Obviously, I think he's got a great name. Um, and, uh, you know, look, I, I think he's got an opportunity to build into an elite prospect. We'll see, right? you got to repeat that your junior year and your senior year. But with DJ Lagway in the fold and now Griffin in 2026, Florida still pursuing a couple of high-level recruits at the quarterback position in 2025, it looks like Billy Napier is really starting to build that quarterback room specifically with guys that are elite prospects. And it's been a long time since Florida's had truly elite prospects coming in the door at the quarterback position. So if you're going to make a case for patience for Billy Napier, that's, that's probably one of the, one of the main areas where that's coming from. So, Hey, on Tuesday, if you're not doing anything 4 30 PM, I've been invited to go up here on the Paul Feinbaum show. So really excited about that. Certainly check that out, share that with different people. We'll be sharing that on X and Facebook. I'm sure. Um, and like I said, the reason, the reason I'm going is we want to talk about the, Florida Preview Magazine, um, and you can get that over at readingreaction.com slash mag. That's readingreaction.com slash M-A-G, or you can just go on Amazon, search Read and Reaction Magazine, or search Gators under books, and you will find it very, very quickly. Really appreciate all of you who have already gone out and bought it. The stuff on the website, the stuff on YouTube, we try to keep it. Um, obviously, there's some ads on it, but for the most part, it's free. We're not putting it behind a paywall or anything like that. And the way we do that is by selling these magazines because these this is the this is the product that we're trying to get out there, trying to expand. And the hope is is that if you all buy enough this year, that's going to prove to us that this is a viable business model to not just do for Florida, but also to do for other teams as well coming forward. Our our, our goal really is to have one of these for each program that plays Power Five football. I guess there's not a power five anymore, but each, each, each program that has a realistic shot at making the playoff is maybe the right way to say it. And, uh, you know, this is the first step to that. And we very, very much appreciate your help in both giving us the confidence to do it and step out and do it. And also in committing your dollars to something that we're putting out there, because that does say that there's value here. So again, appreciate it very, very much. And if you want to check it out, read and slash M A G or go on Amazon, search Read and Reaction Magazine. That's it for now. Thanks so much. Go Gators.